Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and in the very recent episode I was talking about how you can use one of the um, standard Node-RED catch node in order to catch uh, errors that are happening in your flow, mostly in your function nodes. But uh, there is a very similar node, which is called a status node, which is, uh, you know, collecting all the different status messages. And I realized that uh, the same flow that I did for errors can be used to also log status messages uh, very, with a very simple um, modification. So everything that I have done for error logging, I implemented it for status logging now. And if you are not really sure what status is, I mean, if you have seen my, you know, Node-RED related videos that you probably know that every time I create a function node, I usually like to use the statuses. And these are the small messages that appear under the node, which says, uh, you know, says something about the processing of the node. But actually the same concept is used in a lot of different nodes. So if you have ever used MQTT, the word where it says MQTT, that it's connected with a, a green dot, that is a status message, or when it turns red and it shows disconnected. Or if you're using a delay node, then it has a blue dot and it shows the number of messages that are being delayed. There is a lot of information that is shared with us uh, within the node editor that way. And of course, it makes a good idea to collect this information. So what we are going to use is we are going to implement or we are going to use the status node in our flow. And that is going to send us all the various status messages that other nodes on our flow are uh, updating. And of course, that doesn't necessarily has to be just our own nodes, but uh, as I said, most of the standard nodes and of course, a lot of the, you know, the third party nodes use uh, statuses as well. So you can also use this as sort of some sort of, uh, you know, debugging information. Uh, if I'm talking about, um, for example, I mentioned the MQTT example in the past. So, you know, you are going to be able to see when your node red loses connection to the MQTT server. Maybe this is happening a couple of times a day and you don't really know, but you just notice that sometimes the things are not working. So maybe it is down to the fact that for some reason your node red is disconnecting from the MQTT server. So if you implement my status collection method, then you will be able to see these errors. So what we are going to do, just like in the previous video, we are going to create two different collection methods. In one of them, we will collect these errors based on sort of like types, and then uh, the, the flow is going to count how many times they are occurring. So this is like the aggregate collection. And we are also going to log the individual messages as well. So they, you can see when they happened and you can see every single instance of it. And of course, I thought that the email functionality was quite useful last time. So we are going to use that as well. So at the end of the day or, you know, whatever frequency that you want, you can just email everything that you have collected so far and you can just review these logs, especially if you are sort of like uh, managing a remote node instance. Okay, so the flow we are going to talk about is this much. Well, it's this flow today. And um, again, if you have seen my error collection one, which is actually right above it, you will notice that it's almost the same. I only had to make some small tweaking to the uh, collection because the, you know, the type of information that we collect is slightly different. So just to uh, summarize the how the whole thing works. So I have a couple of these, um, you know, test messages or test uh, function nodes. Uh, so I'm going to use function nodes for this, but as I said, you can collect messages from any different nodes, MQTT, uh, delay node, third party nodes, whatever. So here in this first node, this is actually going to change the, uh, the status twice. You can see that first it's going to show a red ring, which says message one, which gets immediately overwritten by a green ring, which then says message one. And in the second one, it says a gray dot where it says connected. So again, just a very simple way of uh, issuing these messages. And I've also created a, a simple UI for this. So we can see that these are the messages. So we have gray, sorry, red ring with a text message one from node one. And so far it happens once. We have gray ring, gray dots, and we can see all these messages individually as well. So, so far all of them happened once. So the number on the aggregate and the number down here are the same. But let's say if I, you know, trigger this a couple of more times, which uh, issues the double message, you can see that the counter goes up now and we can see all these, 
you know, red, green, red, green messages that are uh, being uh, issued. And by the way, uh, just to um, go a little bit ahead, so this only collects the last 10, so that's why you don't see the, the others which were previously here. And of course, if you do the, you know, the second one, now this is issued like three times again, and you can see them here on the on the bottom of the screen. Sorry, two more times because it was already uh, there once. So this creates an aggregate list, so you can see the number of times this has appeared. Uh, sorry, this has uh, happened. So again, let's say if you are trying to monitor how you are getting disconnected and connected to MQTT server, that's a good way of knowing, you know, quickly look and looking at this list and, and you will be able to tell that it is a one-off issue that is happening uh, once a day maybe, or maybe it's happening 100 times a day in very, very short intervals. And then we also have this email functionality. So if I trigger this one, then it collects all the summary and the all status messages and, and it sends everything in an email. And this is how the email looks like. So you can see a date, you see the summary here. So how many times it occurred. And if you look at the attachment, it has all the uh, individual messages as well. So you can have a quick glance of the, the messages that you get throughout, let's say a day. And if you want to get the details, you can look at the attachment as well. So that's what we are going to talk about today. Okay, so um, just to start in the beginning, uh, if you are creating your own nodes, then you can very easily create these status messages. As I said, they are appearing right under your uh, node, and then you can specify a color, a shape, whether it's like a ring or a dot, and then a, a, and a message. And that's pretty much it. And you have to send this information in the node.status uh, method, and this is the sort of the object that you have to send in. So it has a field, shape, and a text property. And then whenever it happens during your execution of the code within the function node, it will update on the UI. So you can just see, you know, it's it's a very simple status message. It gives a very quick look at things, uh, you know, how, uh, what your code is doing, you know, number of messages, that sort of stuff. So a little bit of status message without having to, you know, open a UI and, and check anything there. Well, the only thing is that these are always a one-liner so you cannot create a multiple line status messages even if you have a really long message that's just going to be a very long here in the uh, uh, in your node red editor and that's another example which is just another node status so in order to call like this we are going to use this status node and as you can see here it says Oh, come on, you collapsed. So it, it says that it collects the, the messages from other nodes. So I have created, uh, well, I've already placed it on my uh, flow here. And when you double click, you can uh, specify it to collect messages from selected nodes or all nodes from the flow. So you have to do this uh, one for every single flow. And I, at the moment, I selected these two nodes here. And I think previously I had, oh, okay, these two nodes. And that's it. So every time this status changes here, then there will be a message coming out of this node. So if we look at this, you can see that exception, oh, not exception data, but <laughs> uh, that's the status data. So the um, copy and paste. So this uh, is going to look like this. So it has, it's an object, it has a status property, and within that you have the field, the shape, the text, and then you, in the source you have the ID of the node that issued this message, uh, the type that it's a function node. Again, it makes sense now because all your third-party nodes would have a different type. So, you know, MQTT in, uh, um, well, okay, those are standard, but like say, I mean, whatever node which has, um, uh, statuses would have uh, its dedicated name and of course you have the name of the node which you can see here the another node and this is the information that I'm going to collect so just like previously I have two function node so this creates the aggregated messages or the aggregated collection and what I did here similar to what I have done uh, previously is that I create a key, basically a text from the field, the shape, and the uh, the name of the node. So uh, let's say that it's uh, green and the ring and the node which uh, sent the message is, uh, uh, let's say, node one. 
And then every time a message with the same characteristics come in, then I just count the number of times this is happening. So again, if you think about an MQTT node, it, it will send a, you know, it would be the green dot which says uh, connected, or I think it's a red ring where it says disconnected. So by just grouping the color and the shape and the, um, and the source node, I can you know count how many times it was either connected or disconnected, or changed to connected or changed to disconnected. And this all gets um, uh, collected in a summary node, where you can see it stores this key, uh, the timestamp, which is the time when it occurs the last time. And then it has all the details like, okay, it was uh, a ring, red ring uh, with a text message one. And then, well, that's basically the last uh, text because the text can change as well. And then the source and the function and how many times it occurred. And you can see that for every single one of them. And that basically that uh, gets rendered into an HTML, very simple HTML table. And that's what you see here. And I do an individual collection as well. And here you have to specify the collection size or so the number of messages that are collected. And of course, if you reach this number, then the oldest one gets dropped and the newest one uh, goes to the end of the list. And that just you know collects all the information about this. So that again stores it in a in an array, and you can see each individual objects, uh, each individual messages. So we store when it happened, and then all the properties again. The shape, the, uh, the the field, the shape, the text, the source, and the f and the type of the function or the type of the node which issued this message, and of course this information also gets stored, so not in configuration but in the context data. So if I refresh, you see status all and status summary, and that's it. You also have reset button that you can reset, so then it deletes everything and starts uh, from fresh. So these are the various collection methods. And the email functionality is again very similar to, well, not very similar, but exactly the same process as uh, what I described in the previous email. So we have a function node which generates this file name. So you can see that it, uh, the file name is uh, status underscore summary and then plus the year, month, and the date dot CSV. And then it's going to store it in the slash home slash Enigma. So probably you have to change this to uh, if you are using Raspberry Pi, then we will be slash home slash Pi. So that's the default directory for your Pi user. And then it also stores a couple of information in the email, which then later gets included in the, um, sorry, in this email object, which later gets included in the email message that gets sent out. So for example, date and the file name and other bits and pieces. And then it gets the summary, converts it to a CSV, so you can see all the columns here. And then it creates the file, uh, which is going to be, you can see the file name here as well. So it just creates a CSV. And then it does uh, the same thing for the all statuses. So it creates a file name with a very similar pattern. It saves it in a folder, so you can change this one. And then it puts some other information into the object. And then again, converts it to CSV. You can see the um, columns here. I always include a timestamp and a time. So the timestamp is the Unix time timestamp if you want to do some calculation. And I always uh, include a, um, a the you know the timestamp converted to like a human readable date and time, which is converted to the local um, time settings, time zone, and in the format. And then it gets saved to a file as well. And then uh, at the end, or in well, on, in this node, I create the email body, which, um, well, you could see the email already. So it has a header and it has a table for the summary, and then it has a piece of text here. So the same thing is happening here. We have H1 header, and then we have a table which again pretty much uh, formats the same table what we have seen uh, just a couple of minutes ago, and then it has a piece of text uh, to say that there is an attachment as well. And the setup of the attachment is actually happening here. And um, you probably have seen it in some of my other examples, but in order to send an attachment, you can 
create an attachments message dot attachments object and it has a path which refers to the full file name so this is with you know folder and file name which you have already saved on your server and then you can also specify the file name which is the file name how this is going to appear here on the um, uh, on the email attachment because it doesn't automatically pick up the name of the original file so you can change it and and other than that i just uh, uh, specify the topic which becomes the email subject and then you send everything to the basic you know um, uh, node red email object which i happen to set up for google but or gmail but you can set it up for anything that you want and then it sends out the email so the you know the summary is already going to be the body the attachment is already saved but then we put all the information what which file to attach and it just you know all, uh, attaches the the actual attachment to the email and then sends out the email so and it's very simple and the other thing that i have done here which uh, so at the moment you trigger this manually but let's say if you want to have a daily or a weekly email summary then you can set this up to uh, execute at a specific interval so let's say you know midnight or eight o'clock on every single day so you would just generate the email and what you can do here is after the email is generated and sent you can do this um, you can add this additional note which then resets the uh, uh, all the data so basically you start every day or every week with a you know clean list and then of course then this gets triggered at the end of the day or week and then it just you know set, collects all the information again prepares the email and then resets the whole thing again and that will be the summary of this flow and this whole concept in a nutshell as usual if you are interested in this code you will find the download link in the video description so let's just quickly recap what we talked about in this episode. So we talked about how the, the status messages are used in Node-RED and how we can collect this information using the, well, the status node. And then we have seen a couple of examples how we can yeah, collect this information in various ways, how we can process it and you know, how we can you know, uh, store it as well. In my case, it's just stored in files or, or send it over in an email. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.